Okay, so you guys ready? If you've ever struggled with not knowing what to do next in order to generate more profits from your business data, and I'm talking increased sales, improved revenues, and greater operational efficiencies, then you are in the right place, my friend. Because today I'm going to be sharing with you a winning data case collection that you can use today to initiate a data strategy that actually moves the needle for your organization. The cool thing about this data case collection is it's absolutely not generic. So first you're gonna get the bright and shiny business story of how the organization actually got the win. But then after that, you're gonna look under the hood and look at the use case and how the business actually set that up internally. And then lastly, for all you data geeks out there, you're gonna get the technology specifications that tell you the exact types of technologies and methodologies that are required to support the business in order to get this specific win. Another thing that is absolutely not generic about this case collection is it's highly targeted according to business function. So what I've actually done is I've created a whole series of 21 case collections that I categorized according to how they support the business. Those categories are decision support, operational improvements, marketing improvements, finance, and data monetization. So this case collection is from one of those categories. And like I said, it's highly targeted according to how it supports the business. So if this topic is interesting to you, you're definitely gonna wanna stick around to the end because that's where I'm gonna show you how you can get the 21 winning data case collections that you can use to initiate a data strategy that actually generates profits for your organization. So you can say goodbye to the overwhelm of wondering what to do next in order to generate that next big bonus. So you're gonna to wanna to stick around to the end for this one. Now, the method I'm about to share with you has been working for my data strategy clients inside of Data Mania. Clients like Vince Lee, who's from the Central Bank of Malaysia, used what I taught him to successfully and strategically predict distress in institutions before making those loan decisions. And as we all know, money saved equals greater profits. Booyah! I'm Lillian Pearson and I have trained over 1 million workers to generate business value from data. We are talking about new revenues, increased sales, and greater operational efficiencies for their organization. Not to mention the kudos and serious pay raises they got along the way for doing so. Before diving in, I need to give you an important disclaimer. So like I said, these case collections are categorized according to business function, but I've also categorized them according to industry. And I really did that to make it as easy and quick as possible for you to review the case collections and to identify the ones that are most promising for your organization. As I said, there are five main categories. Now, the example I'm gonna share with you today is from the decision support category. The decision support category is where you would go if you know that your business decision makers or its workers need a more robust form of data-driven support in order to help them make better decisions for the organization in such a way to increase the business's ROI. But we also have other categories. We have a finance category, and that is where you would go if you want to learn how to use data and data innovation to really get some strategic wins for your finance department. And then there's the marketing improvements category of case collections, and you'd go there if you know that your business could get some major windfalls by using its data more strategically to improve the marketing operations. There is the data monetization category, and that is where you wanna go if you wanna look into generating new revenue streams from data that your organization already owns. And there's the operational improvements category. This is where you're gonna to wanna to go if you know that your organization has got some areas where you could get more output for the same level of investment. Now, if you are new to evaluating data use cases, don't worry. Most people are. So what I'm going to do is I am going to take you through the process starting from scratch. The first thing to do before you start evaluating data use cases is really just to remind yourself and to wrap your head around where your organization is at in its current state. So I'm talking questions like, what's the business vision for our organization? What industries do we primarily support? What data technologies do we already have up and running that we could use to generate even more value? What team members do we have on hand to support a new data project? And what are their data skill sets like? What type of data are we looking to generate value from? Structured data, semi-structured data, real-time data, unstructured data, huge data sets. What are your data resources like? Maybe even go ahead and take some notes. And then what I want you to do is, as I'm walking you through this data case collection, I want you to start, just keep asking yourself, how relevant is this case collection to my organization given its current state? 
Now see, actually, this case collection might not be all that relevant for your precise business needs, and that totally makes sense. That's actually why I put together a set of 21 case collections so that we could support as many businesses as possible in all the different arrays of functions and industries they serve. Anyway, though, you really wanna get into this habit of collecting your thoughts around your organization's current state before evaluating any data use cases. So this will be good practice. I am so excited. Are you ready? All right, so I call this the 28% increase in customer satisfaction and 63% increase in employee engagement case collection. <laughs> Um, and basically this was derived from a huge data win in the healthcare industry by a company called Humana. So what you're really going to be doing here is you're going to be seeing how to use data to increase profits per customer by increasing customer satisfaction and customer retention rates. Of course, I can't cover every one of the 21 case collections in one video, which is why I just broke it out into this one case collection, which is a decision support case collection. And um, it happened in the financial slash insurance industry. Now, what this actually means to you is that if you are Let looking go. for new ways to Let generate go. value by increasing go. the quality and Hello. quantity of decision support, for your executives or for your business leaders or maybe for your support personnel in this case, then this is definitely gonna be a case study you want to see. Spoiler alert, alert on this case collection though is that it's from a call center. So if you've got a call center that you want to improve the return on investment from, this case study is a good one for you. The backstory here, what that is, is Humana, it's provided health insurance for over 50 years, and it's a service company that's focused on serving the needs of its customers, including military, self-employed people. A large part of that business operates through efficient and engaging customer service over the phone. Now, as you all know, a lot of emotions arise when you're doing a customer service call. So sometimes people are frustrated, sometimes they're upset, sometimes the, the customer service representative becomes aggravated, and the overall tone and progression of the phone call goes downhill, which is of course very bad for customer satisfaction. Now, Humana was really looking for a way to use artificial intelligence to, one, monitor the phone calls that are coming into their call center, and then two, help their agents do a better job at connecting with the customers in order to improve customer satisfaction. Humana actually worked with a company called Cognito, and it is a spinoff from, um, they picked Cognito because of its voice analytics technology. Now, they use that to assist customer service representatives in getting a more accurate sense of how the customer yeah. on the line is feeling during the phone call. Now, their Cogito's AI tool that they use to do this is called Cogito Dialogue. And it's really been trained to identify certain conversational cues as a way to help out call center representatives and supervisors um, to stay actively engaged in a call with a cu customer. So the AI listens for cues like the customer's voice pitch, if it's rising, the number of times the call representative and the customer talk over each other, this sort of thing. Then the dialogue tool will send out electronic alerts to the agent in real time during the call. So sometimes you'll get an alert something like frequent overlaps or speaking quickly, letting the agent know that they need to switch techniques in order to preserve customer satisfaction ratings. To create this AI digital coaching system, Humana fed the dialogue tool um, customer service data from 10,000 calls and it allowed it to analyze cues like keywords and in interruptions, pauses, and these cues were then linked with specific outcomes um, whenever they occurred. So they did that in order to label the data and help um, make these predictions on, okay, if you get these cues, you're going to get this sort of customer satisfaction result. This is all linked to increasing customer retention rates which then increase profits per customer um, from a business perspective. Now, in terms of results that Humana got from this, 
they actually got a 28% increase in customer satisfaction and then their employee engagement in terms of the conversation, it rose by 63%. You're having happier customers and more engaged customer service representatives. So Humana has deployed this tool in 200 call centers and it plans to keep expanding that deployment to all of its call centers in the future. And in terms of next steps, it plans to start predicting the type of calls that are gonna go unresolved so that it can actually start sending those calls over to management before it actually becomes a big problem for the customer. Okay, so that was the case study. Now, there are really two main business use cases here. And what we did is we broke them down, of course, according to business function, what they actually do for the business. The first one is the analyze customer sentiment. And then number two is to suggest, suggest action to the customer service representative. Looking first at the analyze customer sentiment use case. In terms of who and what is involved in making this happen within the business, here our actors are the system, that's the primary actor, and then the supporting actors are, of course, the customer and the customer service representative. Now, as you can see here in the use case, so you have a customer ser service representative and a customer. They are both producing data. They are producing audio data, and that audio data is being fed into the system. The system is analyzing that data for customer sentiment. And then what the system does is it generates reports, and then it also suggests real-time actions for the customer ser service representative to take during the call in order to improve the satisfaction of the customer. The basic flow of how this would work is one, the customer and the customer service representative establish contact for, via the phone. Two, the system captures data points for sentiment analysis. Now for a call like this, for this type of evaluation, the type of data points you need to collect would be something like speech style, pitch, silence, amount of stress in a customer's voice, length of call, speed of customer speech, quality indicators such as intonation and articulation, agent silence, the amount of speech of an agent, the agent's manner of speaking in terms of is it monotonous or is it overexcited, and then overlaps in communication. Step three is the system analyzes the data collected and it uses models for intent analysis, improvement in real-time communication, and customer engagement. Um, and then, then the last step is that the system generates a host of reports such as a summary of key call issues that were analyzed and a call report. So if you had this set up in your business, you would know that the steps have been successfully followed if, if you're getting data regarding customer sentiment and your customer service representatives, because that data will have been collected, stored, and analyzed. So you would see that as an output of this process. Now let's look at the second business use case that's involved here. This is the one where the system suggests actions to the customer service representative. Now what's really happening here is their system is using data that it collected and analyzed on customer sentiment in order to make suggestions on the best course of action that the customer representative can take. So the system makes these recommendations in real time in order to increase and improve the level of customer satisfaction, thus driving up customer retention rates and profits per customer. In terms of preconditions that are required for this use case to be a success, the call related data is collected and stored and then you need to have the AI models in place that generate analysis on the data points that are generated from the call experience. And then in terms of post conditions, what you'll look for as evidence to know that this is happening successfully. Um, you would know that by seeing a system that's offering real-time suggestions for courses of action that the customer service representative can take to actually improve that customer satisfaction. So very, very, very simple. This is really designed just to give you an idea of the way this is set up inside a business in terms of who you need to operate it and how it actually works within the business so that you can then decide whether that makes sense given your current business setup. In terms of um, the basic flow of how this use case would work, it's actually very simple. The system provides the real-time suggestions to the customer service representative during the call. It would give text alerts, something like the sound is tense, the speed of speaking is high, overlap in customer and customer service representative are talking at the same time, which can lead to customer 
frustration. Things like this, just to let the customer service representative know that they need to modulate their behavior a bit or their intonation in order to improve the satisfaction of the person they are supporting over the phone. Now, last but not least, the technology specification. And like I said, this is definitely for the data geeks out here. Here is what we discovered when we went out and did the research to identify the exact data technologies that are being used to support this smashing success. In terms of the type of technology they've got here with, data, with respect to data management, for cloud data management, we saw that they are using AWS, specifically the Athena project product. For on-premise big data management, they've got Apache um, HDFS, the distributed file system for storing large data, big data. Um, and then they had MapReduce for processing it. They also had, of course, traditional systems, relational database management systems like Postgres. Um, in terms of analytics and visualization tools, they have Tableau. And then in terms of machine learning technologies, this use case requires someone that's got skills in Python, R, and SQL, as well as deep learning. What we actually saw is that they were using the PyTorch library and TensorFlow library. So if you are looking for people to hire in order to implement this for you, these are some of the capabilities in terms of skill sets they're gonna need to have. And these skill sets, uh, data science skill sets, actually support the methodologies of effective com um, computing, deep learning, and natural language processing. So that's enough about the tech talk here. Here at Data Media, we are super committed to remaining vendor agnostic, but the truth here is that Humana did have a vendor that helped them, and that vendor was Cogito. Now, if you liked this use case and you think it would help increase profits for your business, then you may be inclined to go over and see what Cognito, Cognito could offer you. However, that is not the best next step for you to take. What is the next best step, you ask? Well, before deciding whether you want to have a vendor come in and help you or whether you should build this out in-house, well, actually, it is for you to go ahead and to evaluate more use cases and more case studies in order to identify the use case that is going to offer you and your organization the biggest bang for it buck. That is what us data strategists call the lowest hanging fruit use case. And essentially, this use case is the one that's going to be the fastest to implement and require the least amount of new capital or new investment, but offer the biggest returns in terms of business profit. So you want to go ahead and check out some more case collections and see which one really offers the biggest return given your organization's current state. Sound good? Now, if you like this winning data case collection and you like my style of walking you through it and how I've made sure that it's extremely focused on solving business problems and how the data initiative actually boosts profits for the organization, then you are going to want to check out the link below because that is where you can get an entire set of 21 of the most winningest data case collections on the market. This is a hot off the press data strategy product, and you're gonna get 21 winning data case collections, just like the one you saw here today, but so, so much more. So click on the link below and take a good look at what we've put together for you. Here's to greater profits and more efficiency. See you in the next video.